You ever just get tired of years and years of servitude or abuse or being sent out to work only to have the money you earn be given to the person who owns you? No? Wow, how privileged. On April 15, 1848, the largest slavery escape attempt in United States history occurred in Washington, D.C. 77 enslaved men, women, and children hopped aboard a ship named the Pearl in an effort to make it 255 miles to New Jersey, a free state. Six of the 77 were the Edmondson children of Montgomery County, Maryland. Fun fact, I'm from there. Maryland was a state with a high population of free black people. Paul Edmondson was among them. He was married to Amelia Edmondson, who was enslaved. Unfortunately, there was a law among slave states that the children of an enslaved mother inherited their mother's legal status. The Edmondsons had 14 children, and all were born enslaved. Some of the children gained their freedom through marriage and other means. The rest were prevented from doing so and hired out to work in hotels and private estates in neighboring Washington, D.C. This meant that they would work for pay, but the money would go directly to their master. I'm, I'm gonna flip through history real quick and figure out where the idea that black people were lazy came from. Turns out, and now some people may be shocked by this, a lot of enslaved people didn't like being enslaved, so a plan was formed. Many of the prominent freed black people in the area, including Paul Jennings, who was once enslaved by President James Madison, commissioned the help of William Chaplin, a popular abolitionist, and Garrett Smith, a philanthropist known for helping anti-slavery efforts. They both agreed to fund an escape. Captains Daniel Drayton and Edward Sayers were brought on to helm the Pearl and help enslaved people who were willing to take the risk and seek freedom. It was just 255 miles. Word spread and 77 people made their way to the Washington, D.C. wharf. As mentioned before, six of them were the Edmondson children, four boys and two girls, Mary and Emily. Unfortunately, Mother Nature was being a whole ass bitch as they sailed up the Chesapeake Bay. Heavy winds forced them to drop anchor for the night and they lost valuable time. The next morning, slave owners started to notice their property missing and put together an armed posse, loaded them up on a boat and tracked them down near Point Lookout, Maryland. Now, I don't know how they were able to find this out so quickly. Did they wake up to their homes in disarray because their prisoners didn't do their chores? Just waiting for that Negro lady to bring me my clothes so I can get my day started. Ugh, and it's dusty in here. Or was it something else? In 1930, historian and Edmondson descendant John H. Painter wrote in his book, Fugitives of the Pearl, Judson Diggs, one of their own people, a man who in all reason might have been expected to sympathize with their effort, took upon himself the role of Judas. It is said that Diggs escorted someone to the wharf where the pearl was in return for future payment. He then went back and reported what was happening. If so, oh my fucking God, Judd. The posse brought the pearl, its captains, and the 77 enslaved people back to Washington, D.C. They were met by an angry mob and a riot broke out. A pro-slavery riot, to be specific. The rioters attacked anti-slavery newspaper businesses and abolitionists. The assault lasted for three days. As punishment for their attempted escape, the 77 were sold to plantations in the Deep South, which was the worst place an enslaved person could be. The fates of many of these individuals is unknown to this day. But Mary and Emily Edmondson's case began to make the rounds. The six Edmondson children were sent to New Orleans, basically the capital of the slave trade, and put on the auction block for $1,200 apiece. It feels absolutely disgusting to say that. Due to a yellow fever epidemic and wanting to protect their investment, slave trading company Bruin and Hill shipped Mary and Emily to Alexandria, Virginia. Their brothers remained in New Orleans and eventually gained their freedom with the help of an older brother who had been free for some time. Paul Edmondson never stopped fighting for his daughters, but Bruin and Hill wanted $2,250 for their release. Paul Edmondson reached out to Henry Ward Beecher, an abolitionist and minister out of Brooklyn, New York. The church raised enough money and bought the sisters freedom. They were emancipated on November 4th, 1848. Captains Daniel Drayton and Edward Sayers spent four years in prison after being charged and convicted of 77 counts of illegally transporting a slave and aiding slaves before being pardoned by President Miller Fillmore. Because of the rioting, the heavy attention from the Pearl Incident, and the increased opposition to slavery, Washington, D.C. ended its slave trade in 1850, but its full abolishment in D.C. didn't happen until April 16th, 1862. My heart aches for those of the 77 we know nothing about. Their bravery and sacrifice helped put a magnifying glass on America's original sin. Author Harriet Beecher Stowe, sister of Henry Beecher, whose church helped raise the funds for the Edmondson sisters, was heavily influenced by the Pearl Incident when writing her 1852 anti-slavery novel, Uncle Tom's Cabin. White people read this book in mass and were like, hey Jedediah, 
You read this Uncle Tom's Cabin yet? My God, slavery's bad. What's that? Yeah, it's bad. Who knew? This harsh depiction of slavery helped in the long run towards emancipation. So, great. This is the last week of Black History Month. But for me and many black people, black history is with us all day, every day. In fact, you can expect many a black history lesson right here, from now until whenever after school history is said and done. But in the few stories I've told this month, I hope you've seen the resilience within us. We stand on the shoulders of the Elizabeth Freemans, the Elizabeth Jennings, the George Edwin Taylors, the Harriet Tubmans, the Sojourner Truths, the Frederick Douglasses, the Martin Luther Kings, the John Lewises, and the countless unknown men and women who didn't make the history books. And we thank them every day. Happy Black History Month. Class dismissed.